Hey everyone, this is Heather Estes and I am the teacher for the U.S. History class for Explorers to War of 1812. So in lieu of our class just totally failing online, I'm trying to give a video version of what we were supposed to do together in class. So we were talking about the different branches of the United States government. So I made sure to post this so that you could either print this out through Canvas on our online learning platform, or you could also print it out via the email I sent, whichever one you want. We're gonna be checking out this picture of the page of the branches of government where you can cut and paste on your own. This is gonna be going inside of your handy dandy notebook. So make sure you're using this even though we're working from home. And I, I put in my table of contents here that we're working with the branches of government. So you can write that down, put it in your page number that you're working on. And then we're gonna use a page, just a blank page like that. Uh, so what I was trying to explain during our meeting together was that um, thinking about what we've learned so far, we have the United States that was brand new in the night in the late ten, excuse me, the late 1700s. Right, so we won the Revolutionary War, now we have to figure out how to run our own government. Now we know that we don't have a king that's in charge of everything, just like in Britain. They, we didn't want to follow King George anymore, right? So we wanted to make a government that would uh, promote what we would call democracy. And we learned that from the ancient Greeks and so on. We didn't make it up, but we wanted to follow that instead of a king who was in charge of everything all at once. So we created these branches of government. And where this came about is the US Constitution, which we talked about last class, in class together. So in the Constitution, it's really, really specific that we have three different major branches of government. Where are those three? Right here. The first one I talked about online together today in class was the executive branch. If you don't know this picture, this is a picture of the White House. Who lives in the White House? The president, the president of the United States. Now we see him as like, or her, to be her, I don't know. We see them as like the head of our government. They're actually not the head of our government. They're just one person that's in charge of one part of the government. So they're in charge of the executive branch of government. So when you see these pieces on the bottom, we're gonna put them in the right spot together for which one they would represent. The president goes in the executive branch. I'll get to cutting and pasting in just a minute. What I also talked about online today is that one branch is not in charge of everybody. It has to work with the other two branches. And this branch has to work with this branch and this has to work with this one. And they can't all be in charge at one time. They all have to work together. So the president goes in the executive branch and he is in charge of just one part, okay? The other branch we talked about is the legislative branch. The legislative branch is basically Congress. It's a huge amount of people representing every single state in the United States and they represent them with the Senate who have two people representing every state. So two people from California, two people from Hawaii, two people from New York, they're all representative of their state. And then there's the House of Representatives who have a multiple number of people per state. So if it's a bigger state, they have more people representing them. If it's a smaller state, then they don't have as many people. But there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people representing the legislative branch. Okay, so far we have executive branch. In charge of that is the President of the United States. We have the legislative branch here. Who's in charge of that? Congress. We have the Senate. We have the House of Representatives here. Okay, so and we'll get into what they do and the different pieces that we need to add here in just a second. So we've got executive, we've got legislative. Over here, we have judicial. The judicial branch, what do they do? They judge people. They're the judges. They have to do with the laws. They have to deal with um, how can we best follow the document that is our law for our entire country, the Constitution. So they are the Supreme Court. So people in charge of executive, United States president, right? People in charge with the legislative, it's Congress, the Senate and House of Representatives. And then over here, the judges, we have Supreme Court. So there's one major Supreme Court justice, he's, or he or she is the major person in charge. Then there's uh, eight other judges who are in charge of helping them too. So nine judges over here, one president over here, a bajillion 
Congress people over here. So all of these people work together to make sure that we, number one, follow the Constitution of the United States. Number two, that we, uh, you know, can make laws and enforce them and make sure we're all working together as a country. And number three, that they actually change. They change all the time. That's what voting is all about, right? So the president changes every four years or eight years, depending if they get reelected. The uh, senators, the congressmen, they all get changed out all the time. And the judges, uh, they stay on for long periods of time, but they do get changed out. And the president and the congress people can vote on who gets to be in and who doesn't. So all of these places, the Supreme Court, the judicial branch, the executive branch, and the legislative branch, they all have to work together. So pretend it's like parts of your body. Right? So if you, you have your hands, your arms, your legs, your nose, your mouth, your eyes, everything. If one part doesn't work, then the whole body is affected. Right? So if one part, like my mouth, it doesn't work, right? If my hand is not working, then I have, I'm, I'm limited. I only have one hand to work. If my big toe is hurting, then the rest of my body hurts. So um, if this branches of government, they don't work together, there's problems. And the government actually has shut down in the past because people decide not to work together. It's very interesting. So with that, um, enough of my blabber mouth, let's go into cutting and putting it on our paper, okay? So uh, I'm going to be cutting off the bottom really quickly. I love using my big scissors, such as my small scissors in class. And I'm just going to cut out all the small pieces here. And I'm going to be using tape instead of my glue because it's so much faster right now. So, okay, I'm cutting out all the pieces very quickly. Please excuse me while you watch me cut for a second. There's a lot of things that our government can do, and there's a lot of things that our government cannot do. It's all based on the Constitution. That's important to remember. So the Constitution is a very important thing. Okay, so here I go. <clears throat> I think I need to get some tape. <laughs> One second. Okay, I got it. <laughs> anyway. Man, online learning is hard, right? Okay, here we go. So, the main thing to remember is that nobody in the government is more important than the other. And that's interesting because you'd think that the president would be more important because he's the one you see all the time, or she. Or that the people in Congress would be really important. That's not true. It's actually that they have to all work together, and if they don't, then bad things happen. Like, stuff doesn't get done, or the government gets shut down. So... Um, here's some things that the government does and what each job of this branch of these branches are. Okay, so I'm just putting a tape here. Here's what we are up to here. Okay, so first of all, let's find the president. The president little piece. I'm looking for it here. The president. I have all my little pieces laid out. Let's find the one that says the president. So when you find it, you're going to be putting him where? In the executive branch, right? He's the one that's in charge of the executive branch. So I'm putting my tape on it. President. The president is going in the executive branch. President. There he is. Okay. Okay, the next one we're going to find is the... Let's do all the executive stuff. Let's just see what they are doing. So it's not just the president that's involved. He has his vice president, who's his backup person, right? Or her person. And they're going to be the ones that, um, you know, help if in times of trouble, if the president can't be there, then they're the president. You know, if something were to happen to the president, they're the first person to step in. Um, what else can the executive branch do? So let's look at one that says signs and vetoes laws. It looks like this. Signs or vetoes laws. That means that they can actually, uh, when a law comes onto their desk, 
they can choose whether they agree with it or not, and they can sign it to be into law for the whole country, or they can choose to say, eh, I don't like that, let's go back and fix it. That's what a veto is. So if Congress decides to bring this law to the president and say, here you go, let's put this where everyone has to follow it. The president and the executive branch has the right to say yes or no. They can sign it and put it into law or veto it. So that's the one that goes under the president. So that's gonna be here. President or signing in veto's laws. That's what their job is to do. Okay, let's go find another one. Let's find makes treaties, makes treaties. I'm gonna find this one, makes treaties. We've been learning about different wars that have been going on, like the Revolutionary War with our group. Um, so a treaty is basically what helps to end or stop a conflict, right? So a treaty is like an agreement between countries or different groups of people to stop fighting or to say, okay, well, I'll do this if you do that, that's a treaty. So makes treaties is another job that goes under the executive branch. Just like this. So far we've got the president, they sign or veto laws, and they make treaties. Okay? So let's keep it going. We're almost there with this executive branch. Okay. Who do you think is in charge of the military? The commander-in-chief, right? The commander-in-chief is another name that we give to the president. That's part of the executive branch. So we're going to find in charge of military, in charge of military. Where's mine? Here it is. In charge of military. Who's in charge of the military? The president and all the other people in the executive branch. Okay. So that would include like the uh, representative who is the secretary of defense. This is like the cabinet that goes under the president. So it's president, vice president, and then the cabinet. So the cabinet it's not a box. It's not a cabinet that you open the drawer. It's not a cabinet. It's a group of people that the president puts in charge of different parts of our country. For example, the Secretary of Defense, defending our country, the military. The Secretary, like, the Secretary of State, they're in charge of just, in, in large ways, communicating everything. They also have the Secretary of Treasury, who's in charge of our money and things like that. Uh, Secretary of Education, Secretary of Transportation, Secretary of Agriculture, all these people are in that executive branch, okay? So they all work together like that. So here we go so far. We have president, signs or vetoes laws, makes treaties, and in charge of the military. We've got one more section. Let's find one more here. The last one that the executive branch is mainly in charge of, it's called makes appointments. Now, it's not like you're at the doctor's office and you need to make an appointment. That's a different way of saying things. Let's find makes appointments sorry it's blurry. makes appointments makes appointments meaning the president is in charge of appointing people to certain duties okay so that's the last part of the executive branch what that means makes appointments what that means is that he's in charge of putting people in charge of stuff so he's like the biggest delegator that you would have to be. So you need someone in charge of farming, agriculture, fishing game, all that. You're going to put someone in charge of that. You're going to make an appointment of that person. So you're appointing them. You're putting them in charge. If you need someone to, you know, handle the situation in your staff, he has uh, appointed a uh, person in charge of the staff. They call that, oh man, I'm blanking. Yeah, I'm blaming you. <laughs> but like, for example, um, someone appointed me to be your teacher. That was Mrs. Megacy, our director. So our director is in charge of appointing the staff. I'm appointed to be your teacher. There you go. I'm making appointments. Gosh, online learning is hard. Thank you for sticking with me this long. Okay, let's keep it going. So we have all the people, uh, all the jobs for our executive branch. Let's check out the legislative branch. They have a lot of work to do. They have a lot of people in charge here. So let's check this one out. We're going to see we've done executive. Let's do the legislative. we got several boxes here. Let's do them quickly. Okay, so we already know the people in that group are the House of Representatives. Let's go find that one. House of Representatives. Here we go. House of Representatives. Okay. So that includes the congressmen and women who are voted to represent 
that's what they do they represent you so for example in california we have people that we have voted on to represent us in orange county california to represent us in los angeles county in uh, san diego county all the counties in uh different what we call districts in california and we vote to send them to washington dc to be in charge of what we think is important so if we think that the air quality in los angeles county is not very good it's their job to represent us and make sure they know in washington dc oh yeah we need to make sure this is important and we need to send this into a law we need to do some work let's talk about this and make it happen that's their job to represent us so whatever problems are happening like in hawaii if they have a problem with um a school situation there in education they need to practice talking about that and representing them in washington dc in the house of representatives okay so every state has people that represent them in different ways that's the House of Representatives. Okay, let's go on to the next part. So the next one is the Senate. The Senate is made up of two elected people that represent the state at a time. So let's go look for the Senate. The Senate. The Senate is filled with senators. The senators. So men and women are elected from each state and they serve terms to be representatives of the state as a whole. So that's going to go here. So House of Representatives represents the many, many parts of every state. And then the Senate, two different senators from every single state, all 50 states. So there's 100 senators. And uh, they represent the state as a whole. And they're all elected by us as people. We have to decide who we like best to represent our things and what we think is important. Okay. Okay. Moving on. We've got legislators. So who comes up with the laws that go before the president that he can sign in or say no, it's the legislative group. So they're in charge of making laws. So find the part that says makes laws, makes laws. These are the groups that come up with the laws that we choose to say we're going to make laws or not. So makes laws. That one's going after the Senate, right there. Makes laws. We got a few more, let's speed it up here. <clears throat> We've got uh, print coins and money. They're in charge of the mint, not the mint like the, you would eat, but prints, coins, and money. Right here would be next. Print coins and money. That's the legislative group. They're in charge of con Considering that for the whole country. Okay. Um, approves laws. So if the president can sign and say, yes, it's okay that we have this law, they are the group that comes up with it and say, okay, yes, we collectively think this should be a law. So this is the approves laws. That's coming next. Approves laws. There. Okay, so we've got these so far. And then last but not least, this is important and very, very, you know, serious, declare war. It's not the job of the president to say that we are at war or not. This is the last one for the representatives. I'm sorry, for the legislative group. Declare war. Congress is the group that decides whether we are going to declare war on another group or another country. The president has to decide if he agrees with them or not. But again, that's the groups working together. So this is the legislative group, the executive group, and we have four more to represent the judicial group. Okay, let's check it out quickly. We're almost done. Okay, so when we think about the judicial group, they dress in these black robes and they have these like funny white ties. They used to wear wigs, like those powdery white wigs in the past, and they don't now. There's men and women that represent us and uh, help us to make sure we follow the Constitution and all the laws that have been created. And so basically they're judges. There's judges that fit in this branch, okay? So uh, let's look for interprets laws. Interprets laws. So when you are interpreting something, you're telling me what it means. 
So if a law is created, it's their job to help people understand what they mean. Interprets laws. And that could mean like, okay, well, the law states that you have to do this, this, and this. You didn't do that. Therefore, you broke the law. Or you could say the law states this, this, and this. You did that. You did follow the law. That's their job, to interpret the laws and tell us what they mean and making sure that we're following them correctly. That's the judicial branch, okay? So um, how many people are in this branch? It's actually the smallest one. It's nine. Nine different justices. That's another name for a judge or a justice, okay? Nine justices. So nine justices, or you could say nine judges, are in charge of this branch. That's it. So it's nine. And there's a reason why it's nine, not ten or eight. It's nine because it's an odd number and you can't have, you know, one side against the other. It has to be either, you know, the majority agree or the majority disagree. So nine justices or judges are in charge of this group. Okay, we have two more. We're almost there. Okay, so uh, what's the name of this group that we would represent the judicial branch most of the time? It's called the Supreme Court. There's other courts all over the country and even in our own city. But this one is the supreme one that's in charge of all the other courts. And last but not least, what's the other group in charge of the courts? The federal courts. Federal courts will go with this one as well. So federal meaning the courts that represent the entire country. So I hope you enjoyed my long-winded explanation of the branches of government. The main things you want to take away from this is that our government works as a group. It's all elected by the people and represents us individually and as collectively states. We have to make sure that they work together and if they don't then they actually stop working entirely. So uh, we're going to continue to learn about the different parts of our government, but also we're going to learn about uh, the different ways it represents us. And we're going to be learning the different things that represent us as well, like the Great Seal of the United States. We're going to check out uh, American symbols and things next time. So hopefully you won't have to listen to a 20-minute video that explains what we're doing in class. I hope that we can do it actually in class too. Hope you have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much for paying attention so long. And if you have any questions, let me know. Hope you have an awesome day. Hang in there. We'll get through this together. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye.